everyone. Welcome to Sketchbook Arrival 2022. I'm Karen, your host, and I'm here with the fabulous Sarah Matthews. Hi, Sarah. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm so happy you're here. Um, you may remember Sarah from last year's Sketchbook Arrival when she did a fabulous session on stamping and making your, making your own stamps. And yeah. This year, we get her other magical talent, which is book binding. And I'm so delighted that she's like our special artist who's going to share with us uh, an approach for making your own handmade book, which yes. you might want to use for Sketchbook Arrival. You might want to use it as the book that you then fill up with your work, right, From for the event, which is so neat. Um, or you're also welcome to use it for anything else that you want if you have a store-bought book that you want to use. But that's sort of the idea behind this opening pre-session, which is all about, you know, making a handmade book. So, so grateful for Sarah to guide us in the process for making one of her um, books. And before we pass it over to her, though, I just wanted to give her a proper introduction in case you are meeting her for the first time. So Sarah is joining us from Maryland in the United States, and she is, as I said, a talented artist who wears many hats. She's both a printmaker and a book artist, and she teaches both of those art forms, and she's also a YouTuber and a designer, and her work has been exhibited in the U.S. and is also part of permanent collections, um, and she's currently the Alma Thomas Fellow at the Studio Gallery in Washington, D.C., and um, yeah, so we're going to, I'll go over the materials list in a minute, but I just wanted to uh, maybe offer Sarah the chance to share with us a little bit more about her art practice and all the things that she has going on. So I know she has an exhibit going on right now. And I don't know, I just would love to hear you share a little bit more about, you know, your approach to creativity and, and what you've got going on, Sarah. I, I consider myself a uh, printmaker who makes books from her prints. Um, when I first started like really printing, um, it was making invitations for weddings. So when I got my wedding invitations, they were ugly, I hated them, but I didn't have time to like order new ones. But in the back of my mind, I always knew that I could do it. So I embossed and printed my cousin and my sister's wedding invitations. And then fast forward, like I was really thinking about really going back and doing art school, even though I had like an MBA and whatever. I really wanted to, to pursue it. So I thought, okay, I can do this art in the book thing because um, it will help me with letterpress. Cause that was the, that was the catchphrase for me. It was like, oh, letterpress, I can letterpress <laughs> invitations. <laughs> but I really didn't feel like I had a great like portfolio. So like I would go on the website and not apply but I would just look at it and read the descriptions and stuff. <laughs> And then one day this little voice kept telling me, you know, you should, you should apply, you should apply, you should apply. Every morning I would wake up, a little voice would like say, apply, you need to apply. And then when I um, was getting married, not remarried, not married, I'm sorry, renewing my vows, because it was 10 years, fast forward, 10 years, renewing my vows and had time off with my husband. And the kids were at, at, you know, the grandparents and I wasn't at work. So that little voice now was loud, loud to the point where my head hurt and I could barely open my eyes. So on the way to our second honeymoon, I fill out the application on my iPad. <laughs> oh my gosh. Best decision, decision ever, Sarah. <laughs> I know. But again, I still didn't have the portfolio but I packed up all my invitations and took them to my interview. And like, she was intently going through all of them. I actually brought like drawings and paintings or whatever. And she quickly set those aside and just was like really going through all the invitations. And a few weeks later, they sent me, you know, an email saying that I was accepted to the Corcoran College of Art and Design. I'm like, <laughs> with a scholarship too. <laughs> from invitations invitations y'all right <laughs> so oh um the first the very first class I took was letterpress it was actually called digital meets press so you would design things digitally through photoshop then you would make plates from that and then create your posters and books uh, and the very first book that I made was in that class but I didn't know how to sew 
So I use bolts to hold it together. <laughs> I'm just not remembering this. <laughs> and so after that, I took like a lot of art history. Don't know why, but I took a lot of art history because that was a requirement. But it was, it was like sucking the life out of me because you have to write like not three pages, but several pages about one artwork and how it resonated with you and what, you know, the, the, like the dimensions and, and the, um, and the stuff that cascades from it or whatever, what the feeling that you receive from it. And I'm like, what? (laughs) I can barely get one page done. Right. But I end up taking two classes um, together. It was bookbinding one and advanced printmaking. And that is exactly what I do mm. every day. Oh. And I wish I could have just skipped all that <laughs> and got to those two classes. But I learned a lot about myself and who I wanted to be. And that has translated to the artist that I am now. So inspiring. Oh, what an amazing journey. And thank you so much for sharing that. I just love it. I feel like um, the courage it took to apply and go through that. Many of us could probably relate to that feeling of, you know, wanting to do something so badly and, and not doing it for many years. And then finally doing it. It's just like, wow, love it. And your voice seems so defined now. Um, I would, maybe you want to share with us, you have, you do have an exhibit going on currently, right? Yes, I do. Um, It's my first solo exhibition. Um, Mm -hmm. It's called Overcomer. It's at the Anne Marie Sculpture Garden. And a lot of the things that are in this exhibit I made during the pandemic. So um, it it was truly a mind mind shift because after leaving school, you know, you at school, you have all these resources, you have all these presses, you have all these studios to do your work. And then when you go home, it's like, what, what, what can I do? Right. And then you, you tell yourself a story, you tell yourself a story that I can't do it because I don't have this. I can't do it because I don't have that. And so I was constantly like looking up, trying to find presses, which I end up getting, but they're in the, in the garage. Right. Then this is like after I graduated, I actually had a daughter. She's now five, but at the time she was a baby and I didn't make anything for an entire year. So um, I ended up, you know, doing a call for entry and ripping the bandaid off and carving a two feet by four feet block. But that was all I needed to have that trajectory to keep on going. And then the pandemic hit. Then it was like, I really don't have access to anything to make the things I want. So I started making it right at this table, right here in this room. I also utilize my living room table. I utilize my kitchen to print a majority of these prints that are in this show. Mm. So it's proof that um, you can do it. I had to change the mindset that I needed to have this gigantic studio to get my work done. I had to say, wherever I am is where the studio is. Mm. so that's how this got completed so and I have some photos too if you want to yeah show us a couple of photos so this is the community project that we did um so basically children and families came and I helped them um design their own stamps using foam and um printing their own posters and the theme was only love coming Mm. from the quote from Dr. Martin Luther King Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. And so the whole wall was like filled with uh, friends. <laughs> Actually, it was two walls. It was so many. And to have the opportunity to do this and to make an impact on people's lives was like really rewarding. And let's see. Sorry, it's lots of. Oh, that's okay. This is so inspiring. Oh. I'm trying to get to my work, but we, I did take a lot of photos of the um, the prints that the people were doing, which was like so amazing. Um, and there were a lot of folks there that said that they had never done anything like that before and they want to continue on and show their children how to do it. So 
that that was inspirational for me. And then behind behind all this is where my exhibition is currently and will be up until February 27th. And let's get down to the <laughs> <laughs> the real photos. Okay, let's see. All right. So this is um one of the prints. It was made with PVC uh, plastic. So I carved it out with different gouges to create this. Um, it took several weeks to get it done because um, you wet the paper and then you run it through one color, let it dry, wet the paper again, run it through another color and so on and so forth. So it was three colors, but as you can see, as they layer across each other, you get the other colors, which is so interesting. Um, this is a wood block print that I did. This is one of the two feet by four feet prints that I have done. Um, this is of me, <laughs> hence I am me. And um, I decided to do a self portrait because I felt like I don't like pictures of myself. Even like looking at myself right now, talking to you, I'm like, how do I look? <laughs> And this was my way of like embracing my beauty by carving my face in a large like piece of wood, you know. This is another one that I did. Um, it's called Just Another Wall. And um, it's basically to shed a light on like my situation as an African-American woman. Um, I really can't swim. And that's because my parents didn't swim because they grew up in Jim Crow down in South Carolina. And so there's a perpetuation of like how one sign can make an impact on, you know, people's lives. <clears throat> and then these are um, some prints that I did again here in my uh, living room, um, black prints, um, Black Lives Matter. This one's about voting. And I made sure the frame was um, mirrored so you could see yourself and how important it is to vote. Um, this one um, is basically be you too. So it's important for us to show up as ourselves, as our full authentic selves. And that's what that is inspired by. And then this was originally my thesis project. And um, it's one of the prints that I made a mistake on. <laughs> so I went through and repainted it in the center. The outside is, is, is fine, but I repainted the center because, you know, sometimes when you're screen printing, it doesn't fully get everywhere. So I just redid some things. <laughs> so yeah, so that's, that's the gist of the show. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I'm not showing you all of it because I want you to come see it or you can come to my website and see the rest of them. So yeah. exactly exactly well thank you for sharing that it was so inspiring and beautiful and just congratulations again on this exciting exhibit and um i hope you all enjoyed seeing sarah's work so and and seeing yeah what a treat it is to have her here with us to guide us in our bookmaking session this year so um yeah so i would like do you have before we dive over to your art table sarah is there anything you'd like to say about the book making the book that you chose to make with us or Anything to introduce that part of, yeah, your session? Yeah, so um, we're going to use materials that you have readily available in your home. Um, and the most important thing is to have fun with it. And if you feel the need to pause at any point, feel free to pause and rewind and restart. Um, it's all a learning process. And I hope that after this experience that you will continue to make more books. Yay, I love it. <laughs> yes, we will. Um, so yeah, just take a look at the materials list below the video and you'll see all the things that Sarah will be using. Um, you know, there's the cardboard and paper and, you know, feel free to use a mixture of paper that you would like. Um, in the workshops coming up during Sketchbook Revival, there'll be sessions that use you know, mixed media paper and watercolor paper or drawing paper. So really a mixture is good um, or, or leaning towards all mixed media so that it will be good for every session. 
And let's see, and you'll also need a ruler and an awl or something else to poke holes with. I used a nail and a hammer, I admit. <laughs> um, a needle with a large eye, wax linen thread, scissors, utility knife, bone folder or butter knife, and a cutting mat. But Sarah will go over those two in the video. So yes. All right, Sarah, is that, are we ready to get started? Yes, just one thing. If you um, decide to get an awl, you can just go to your local like sewing supply store, because that's what I use. I didn't use a traditional bookbinding awl. I use a tailor's awl. So anything works. And if you don't have that, you can always use a push pin as well. Excellent. Good alternatives. And the butter knife instead of a bone folder that I've never heard that alternative before too. That's wonderful. <laughs> we all have a knife. <laughs> I learned that from one of my students. Um, so I teach at MICA and they showed up the first day because they couldn't get to the um, to the art store in time and she brought a butter knife. And I was like, brilliant. <laughs> That's great. That's you learn from students too, right? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Okay, so on that note, let's dive over. Let's go over to your art table and get started. <laughs> I've cut my cardboard out. It is 19 inches by 12 inches. I'm using vellum bristol for my pages. Mine are 11 by 17. And I folded them in half. I'm gonna put the pages together into a signature. and I'm gonna trim the edges. Now I'm gonna measure the width of my signature. It's about a fourth of an inch. Now I'm gonna find the center of my cardboard. Mine is nine and a half inches. Now I'm gonna measure out a fourth of an inch on both sides of that mark. Now I'm gonna score on both sides of the center. So not the center line, but on the opposite sides with my bone folder. If you don't have one of those, you can use a butter knife. Now I'm gonna fold at the scored lines to create the spine. Now I'm going to trim the edges. Before I go any further, I'm going to dry fit the signature within the cover. Now I'm going to use a scratch sheet of paper that is the same height of my spine, which is 11 inches, and I'm gonna fold it in half 
three times. And then I'm going to unfold it and then I will have seven folds. Now I'm going to put the signature together with a clip. And I'm going to use my cheat sheet or jig to mark at each fold so I know where to poke my holes with my awl later. And now I'm using my awl to poke the holes. Now I'm going to do the same thing for my cover. I'm using wax linen thread and I'm going to measure out a little bit over three lengths of the spine. I'm pulling the thread through to about three inches past the eye of the needle. I'm going to line up the holes in the signature, the holes that are in the cover, and clip them all together. I'm going to start at the top hole from the inside of the signature going through to the outside of the cover. I'm pulling a thread all the way through and then leaving a tail on the inside. And then I'm going to go through the second hole. I'm taking my time here and going through each page. Now I'm going to tie a box knot so it's going to be left over right, right over left to create this box knot. And now I'm going to go through the third hole from the inside out. I'm going to go underneath the link and then back through 
the third hole. And then down to the fourth hole from the inside out. And then underneath the links above and back through the fourth hole. I'm going to repeat the same steps for the next few holes. I'm gonna make a box knot at the end with my needle. So going through, through the loop, pull, make that knot, and then I'm gonna go the opposite direction, even though I have to like re-thread my needle, but that's okay. Going through the other direction, through the loop, and tying that knot. And I'm gonna trim the threads at the top and bottom of my book. I'm gonna press my book overnight and it'll be ready to use and decorate as I wish for the sketchbook revival. Thanks for watching. Bye. All right, everyone. So we're back. How was your bookmaking? I hope you had fun. Look, oh, show your Sarah. This is mine, as you can see. Mm. But you know, the only thing I would say, I might re-sew this again because I feel like the, the peach is a little too light. So I might go through and do like black or dark green. That's why you can always go back and retry and do things and switch it up, right? So... Yeah. So I hope you will take the time to like decorate your covers. I have several examples that you can do. Like in this instance, I block printed on this cover. Um, this one I use paint. Um, this one is just different prints that are already had that I just that were like scraps. I just chopped them up and print and um, glued them on, and then I printed on top. So it's like a paper quilt. And this is another one that I, you know, just block printed on top. So feel free to like fill up the cover with some of the lessons that you're gonna learn. Hey, you might do a square of watercolor and then on the side, you might do some painting or some collage, but feel free to really fill this up on the inside covers and on the outside covers, just have fun with it. Yes, it's like a blank canvas that we get to do whatever we want with. So yeah. make it your and own. It's not too precious because it's cardboard. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. It's so sturdy. I just love how. Um, yeah, it was really fun to make, and really, it feels so um, durable. I have to say, sturdy. You know, like you yeah, can really yeah. take this with you everywhere, and just um, yeah, do so much with it. So we cannot wait to see your books. Please come share in the Facebook group. You know decorated, undecorated, wherever you're at, come share what you made so Sarah can see and I can see. We can start to get excited to fill them up during the workshop. 
It <laughs> always gives me goosebumps to see other people make books. Just <laughs> Yes, so you must share because we want to give Sarah lots of goosebumps. <laughs> um, all right, Sarah. Well, I know you also have a fabulous free gift for everyone for those who want to keep creating with you. Can you share us what that is? Share with us what that is so people can sign up for it. Yes, I'm going to give you four access to four videos that show me upcycling um, or using upcycle materials to make books. So some more tools for your arsenal to make more books um, and to keep doing that. Yay. Oh my gosh. Four. That sounds amazing. So generous. Thank you so much. The link for that is right below the video. So click on that to sign up for Sarah's wonderful free gift and have fun exploring more book binding and all the different ways that you can have incorporate that into your practices. So Thank you, Sarah, for this fabulous session, for getting us started for ske with Sketchbook Revival. We cannot wait to, yeah, fill, use your book in all the different ways that we get to use it. So thank you for joining us, everyone. We look forward to lots of more sessions. And yeah, we'll see you soon. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye, Sarah. Bye. Oh.